Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia. Claudia, based on the original stories by Rose Franken. Brought to you, transcribed, Monday through Friday, by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Fritz, you've done a beautiful job. I don't know how to thank you. You thank me when you say it looks so beautiful. You think Mr. Norton will like it? I hated to buy it without him. He must like it. <laughs> like a different room it looks. Much bigger, twice as big. You know, I can't decide which I like best, the bedroom or the living room. You have both. You need not to decide. (laughs) (laughs) Fritz, thanks again for putting down my carpet. I didn't really want to ask you to do it, but I expect company this afternoon. Goodbye, Mrs. Norton. The elevator stopped. It's Mr. Norton. David, hello. Oh, good afternoon, Fritz. Hello, darling. Goodbye. And Mrs. Norton, uh, I come up to fix the window in the morning. Fine. Goodbye. Hello, David. Darling, we're not going to stand out here in the hall. We'll say hello properly in the privacy of our own apartment. But but you you can't go into your privacy so fast. Why not? My privacy, isn't it? You won't be so sure when you see it. Now, don't look so suspicious. I just want to give you a little speech first. Something has happened. Go on. Speech. I went shopping, David. Uh Uh-oh. Don't uh uh-oh so fast. I went to buy some dining room furniture with Mama, and then I thought it was silly. Why buy a lot of furniture to clutter up the floor and make it harder to put down the carpet later? First things first. So you bought a carpet. Oh, David, you always guess before I'm through telling you it's no fun. I bought two. That's twice as good, or twice as bad. Now can I go in? Oh, David, I hope you like them. Julia's dropping in in a little while. I hope she likes them, too. Oh, she said she had something very important to talk to you about. Now, are you going to get out of my way and let me into my carpeted apartment, or will I have to use brute force? Use brute force. (laughs) But just remember, you can't return sale items. Oh, sale items, eh? Don't be so snooty about sales. I had to bribe the taxi driver to bring them home. The rooms are wearing them now. I did want them for Julia. Well... Well, come on in. Like it? It's black. You don't like it, do you? I, I don't know yet. I thought black would go with everything, just like a dress. Besides, it was only one of two carpets left, so I... Uh, what happened to the other one? I bought it, too. It's in the bedroom. Black? In a bedroom, I should say not. David, you don't like it at all. Don't you think it makes the room look big? Immense. Is that all? Darling, I... I think it looks very handsome. You do? Why didn't you say so before? I'm a wreck. You can walk on it, David. Well, can I? That's nice to know. Want to see the bedroom? This minute? Say, how do you like walking and not hearing yourself? Lovely. I keep thinking I'm not here. (laughs) Here we are in the bedroom, sir. David, close your mouth. It's as big as a saucer. Those are my eyes. It's... It's so white. It's supposed to be so white. How long? What do you mean, how long? As long as the room. Can't you see? It fits perfectly. I mean, uh, how long do you think it'll stay white? In the bedroom? Oh, a long time. The salesman told me that white wears beautifully in a bedroom. It looks so bridal. Well... We're married, so it's all right. I suppose by the time we stop looking married, the carpet will stop looking white, so we'll still match. You wish I hadn't bought it, don't you? Now, did you hear me say any such thing? You don't have to say it for me to hear it. Now, you listen to this, then. I think this white carpet is, well... Impractical? It... Who cares? It's, it's very smart looking. goes perfectly with the sheets on the bed and the walls. I... I wouldn't have any other carpet in here. How's that? Well, it was a big bargain, half of what it should have cost. I don't want to hear any more excuses for it. I like it. Now, 
Here's a kiss for the black carpet. And here's one for the white carpet. And here's one for you. I bought a bath mat, too. Doesn't count enough for an extra kiss. Anybody can buy a bath mat. I think I'll go in and shave on it before Julia comes. Would you mind rolling the mat up while you shave? I'd hate to have you get it dirty and wet right off. That's what bath mats are for. No, but let's see how long we can keep it from knowing. David, look, are those your footprints all over there? Look. No, those aren't mine. My feet aren't that big. They're not? No. Try one on. Oh, you're right. That is me. I thought your feet would be clean by the time you got in here. You'll have to be more careful. Maybe you ought to leave my slippers at the door so I can change before entering. That's an idea. Are you serious? Of course I'm serious. Well, I wasn't. If you think I'm going to take off my shoes every time I want to come into my bedroom, you're sadly mistaken. Well, I don't mind. Well, I do. Find me a man that wouldn't. It's not asking so much. It's the principle. You dirty this carpet for a principle? I would. Now, look, darling, if we're to have a white carpet and it looks like we have. Let's let's enjoy it, not worry about it. How about Try it? Try not to. Thank goodness black doesn't show dirt. Here, I'll help you brush off these footprints. There, it looks almost new again. I'll go get dinner, David. You shave. Oh, oh, David. What now? There has been a robber while we were in the bedroom. What are you talking about? Look in the living room. White footprints on the black carpet. They can't be yours. Yours were black. Somebody else must have been here. I cannot tell a lie. I did it with my little feet. See? They fit me perfectly. David, they can't be yours. were black. Black on the white carpet, but white on the black carpet. I never heard of anything so ridiculous. Well, that doesn't alter the case. Nonsense. Now, look, darling. Dust shows white on black and... Oh... Then the solution is to switch the carpets around. Are you serious? Well, if I put the white carpet in the living room and the black in the bedroom, then the white marks would go on the white carpet and the black on the black, and nothing would show. What do you think? David, you've got a funny expression. No, uh, Mrs. Norton, the expression on my face is a shameful understatement of my feelings. Oh, I guess you're right. I guess it wouldn't work. You guessed right. You go to the head of the class. That's the house phone. It's Julia. David, you might dust off the footmarks you made while you're there. Hello? Yes. She's on her way up. Fine. That was Julia, or rather the doorman. You know, she's starting to feel less like a sister-in-law and more like a relative. A little more, and we can chalk her off our list. What do you suppose, what do you suppose she wants? I have a hunch it's about that Mr. Carrington that I met on Friday at Julia's dinner party. He was very interested in your architecture. Mm, So you told me. I I think he was more interested in you. In me? How silly. I'm married. That has never been considered a drawback. David, you're jealous. Nope. Delighted. Every man likes to see his wife be the belle of the ball. Really? I thought the opposite. Oh, there she is. Do I look all right? Julia won't even notice you. Our carpets will hit her right between the eyes. I, I hope so. Coming, Julia. How nice of you to come up, Julia. I dropped by on purpose, my sweet. I wanted to congratulate David. Oh, hello, Julia. Your lambs let me drop in like this unexpectedly. W- w- won't you sit down? Oh, really, I've just got a minute. My masseuse is waiting. Claudia, you didn't tell me you'd got your carpeting. It was just laid this afternoon, Julia. Do you like it? Like it? Why, it's the very latest word. Black with white walls. Very chic. Really? It's very cheap, too. Oh, it couldn't have been. There's a very rich nap. Mmm, I like this black carpet. I suppose you have a good maid or you wouldn't dare to have... I'm excellent. (laughs) No, no, listen, you two, I've just got a minute. I came up mainly to congratulate David. Oh, what for? For you. David got himself a very bright wife. Victor Carrington called me today. He thinks you're so wonderful that he wants to talk with David about business. Well, that's a new angle. David, don't be so independent. He's very impressed with you. I thought he was impressed with my wife. (laughs) As far as Victor Carrington is concerned, it's the same thing. He's a brilliant man, David. Owns the biggest department store in Chicago. I've heard about him. Everyone has. 
I think he's going to get in touch with you. He hasn't called yet, has he? Well, I was out. I don't know. Good. I came here purposely to impress you to be sure to take advantage of anything he may offer you. Offer me? Like like what? I don't know what he has in mind, but something Claudia told him has got him very interested. What did you say to him, darling? I don't know. I was just talking. David, even if you don't realize the possibilities of doing business at dinner parties, I'm glad to see that Claudia does. I wonder what I said. I should think you'd be very proud of her. Oh, I am, very. And indebted, too. That's him. You go. It's your house. You go. You pay the bills. You run them up, and it's probably... Hello? Yes, this is Mrs. Norton. Oh, hello, Mr. Carrington. I enjoyed meeting you, too, very much. My husband and I, I I mean me. I was right. Tomorrow at five. Well, just a minute, Mr. Carrington, I'll ask him. David. All right, tomorrow at five, or Julia will never forgive us. At five is fine, Mr. Carrington. We'll be there. Goodbye. Well, my sweet? That was him, all right, tomorrow at five. What do you suppose he wants? You'll see. David, I want you to remember what I said. Now that my mission is accomplished, I've got to go. Goodbye, you two. Claudia, your carpets are lovely. So brave of you. You're going to make David a very clever and helpful wife. It was wonderful of you to drop in, Julia. Goodbye. Give our regards to Hartley, Julia. I will. And call me when you've seen Carrington. Right. Bye. Well, now what do you think of me? I'm not so dumb, am I? As Julia says, you're very clever and helpful. I am? Yep. From now on, you can be my business manager. I don't think I'm interested in the job, thank you. You're not? But you're so good at it. Lots of young men would like to get an entree with Mr. Carrington. They would? With the snap of your finger, my bright bride, you have arranged it. David, you didn't need me for it. Looks like I did. Though I never particularly wanted to seek out Carrington, he's a... He's a good man to know. When he talks to you, he'll forget all about me. What's the matter? Aren't you pleased with yourself? You don't seem to be particularly pleased with me. Oh, but I am. I I just said I thought you were very clever. I don't think I like you to call me clever. Sounds better from Julia. My sweet. How's that? Worse. Darling, tell me, don't you think that if we switched the white and the black carpets with each other, it would take care of everything? The black box don't show on the black and the white. Nor the white on the white. Exactly. Wouldn't it work? For a girl who can be so bright in some things, you certainly manage to be unbright about others. But it sounds sensible to me. David, why are you looking at me like that? I can't believe my ears. What's the matter with them? Darling, in spite of Mr. Carrington and Julia, I still think you're a goop. Then you still love me, David? You're the biggest goop I ever married, and I love you. That's all I wanted to hear. This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. The very thought of company makes some women fidgety. Others throw open the door with a smile that says, Come on in. My, but we're glad to see you. The hostess who's prepared, the hostess, for example, who has plenty of Coca-Cola in the refrigerator, doesn't care how many unexpected guests troop across her threshold. They're welcome, and they know it. The minute she says, have a Coke. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you, transcribed, with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are... Whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For ice-cold Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. (laughs) 